Hello dear learners, dear learners, let us study one more beautiful poem from the pen of William Wordsworth, one of the most important poets of the first generation of romantics, means romantic age that began with the publication of lyrical ballads that was actually the collection of 23 poems. Four from S.T. Coleridge and 19 from Wordsworth. And out of those 19, out of those 19, one was this very particular poem that is The Tables Turned. Beautiful poem. This very particular poem runs into, runs into eight stanzas, four lines actually each. It means the total number of the lines used in this very particular poem is the total number of the line. The total number of the lines used in this very particular poem is 32. 32 lines. And these 32 lines actually are divided into divided into eight stanzas, four lines. It means quadrant. So, which stanza form is used in the poem? Quatrain stanza form is used in the poem. That is, that is the ballad stanza form. And generally, tetra and trimeter, tetra and trimeters actually are used in quatrain, particularly in ballads. So, this poem is also written in quatrains. Eight quatrains are used particularly for writing this very particular poem. Tetra and trimeters are used in most of actually the stanzas of the poem. I told you that this poem was actually this poem was actually the part of lyrical ballads, a collection of 23 poems, 19 from William Wordsworth and four from S.T. Coleridge, Wordsworth, lifetime friend. And one thing is very, very important that you have to bear in mind that with the publication of lyrical ballads in 1798, what began a new era in the history of English literature began that was called Romantic Age. So with the beginning, sorry, with the publication of this, this uh, collection of poems, Lyrical Ballads, Romantic Age began and it lasted till the year 1837. Because in 1837, Queen Victoria came to, came to power. She became the Queen of England and with her crowning, a new era began in English literature that is called Victorian Age. And Victorian Age ended in 1901, means 1901, with the death of Queen Victoria. So this very particular, now let's, let's uh, get back to this very particular poem. And the title of this very particular poem is The Tables Turned. In this very particular poem, actually William Wordsworth is highlighting the importance of practical knowledge. Bear in mind, he has been highlighting the importance of practical knowledge over, over you can say that, over bookish knowledge. Here he is. Here he is asking his readers, here he is asking his readers, you can say, to give up, to give up getting bookish knowledge, to stop collecting bookish knowledge. Why? Because what is actually the use of the bookish knowledge? Actually, no use. And here he wants his readers to come forward, to come forward and and get or obtain practical knowledge and the best source of getting practical knowledge is none other than nature 
And since you all have know that William Wordsworth was one of the greatest worshippers, devotees of nature. So here he says that nature is the best source of obtaining or getting practical knowledge. Even he, even he says that this nature is the best teacher. No teacher, no says, S-A-G-E says, a saint, a man, a man with the great knowledge of, great knowledge of religion and spirituality can stand nowhere, sorry, can stand nowhere in comparison, in comparison with the nature when it comes to practical knowledge. And that's why here he begins, here he begins the line, see, up, up. See, the poem begins with spondy. Spondy, a, a pattern of a pattern of two syllables. A pattern of sorry, two stressed syllable is called spondy. So, see, the first two words, first two words have two syllables, and both of these two syllables are stressed. Means accented. So, the poem begins with what? begins with you can say that spondy spondy i told you a pattern of two stress syllable second thing second thing that here you can say this this line is repeated up up in the first line two time then again the third line two time it means palilosia 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 is also used in this very particular poem palilosia is a kind of a figure of a speech in which certain word is repeated, particularly for laying emphasis on, on a certain on a certain idea or thought. That is that is the dominating or most important idea of that very particular work or of that very particular poem. So in the first line of the poem, see spondy, the poem begins with this spondy. Second, the poem in the first line we have which figure of speech? Epizexis or Palilosia or Diocopy or you can say that repetition. But remember this Palilosia, Diocopy and Epizexis. So the first Epizexis is none other than Palilosia. Palilosia is none other than diocopy. So, Palilosia, diocopy and epizexis. E-P-I-Z-E-U-X-I-S. Probably is the spelling of epizexis. Palilosia, P-A-L-I-L-O-G-I-A. Palilosia, diocopy, D-I-A-C-O-P-E, diocopy. So, in the first line, Diocopy is used. Why? Because here the poet says up, up. He's repeating the word up, up. My friend and quit, quit, give up your books. So here the poet of the poem or the speaker of the poem in the first line is asking or is addressing, you can say, the readers just as friend. Here, the friend is none other than readers. You can say that. Here he is asking his readers to stop, stop, stop reading, reading of the books. Why? Because what is the use of getting the bookish knowledge? No use of bookish knowledge. Or bookish knowledge is never complete, never complete or never useful in the absence of in the absence of practical knowledge. And where can one get practical knowledge? Or where can we get practical knowledge from? None other than nature. We can get practical knowledge from nature. And that's why he says, up, up my friend and quit your books. Or surely you'll grow double. He says that if you are not going to stop continuing stop if you're not going to stop reading definitely you are going to become you are going to put on put on the weight put on the 
weight exactly the double you have at present he wants to see he means to say or uh, I would like to explain you by this way he means to say that suppose my dear friend if you if you weigh your weight is 50 kilogram and if you continue reading the way you are you have been reading sitting at one place you are going to become 100 kilogram so he says you are going to become double means you are going to gain the weight actually double double the weight you have at present and that's why here is asking stop here is emphasizing up up means stop reading and get out of your room and allow and allow the sunlight to fall onto you see that setting of the sun that is that is adding beautiful color beautiful color to the sky to the just uh, to the to the grass uh, to the grass and the hills down here on the earth that will teach you a lot and that will give you a lot to learn and whatever you will learn that will be the practical knowledge practical learning see this or surely you'll grow double up up again repetition my friend and clear your look so he says since you have been reading for a long time that's why the signs of stress sign of you can say sign of uh, tension you can say the sign of seriousness sign of seriousness can well be seen can well be seen rested rested on your own way so better better get, stop reading take a break and and make your look a little bit better or look a little bit look a little bit fresh and smart and clear and that's why he says what clear your looks clear your looks means bring a change in your own looks why because generally what happens if we have been studying for a certain time one can easily understand one can easily notice the signs of stress signs of seriousness and concentration concentration on our own face same is the case with the with this very particular friend that is maybe the reader or is reader he said that see how do you look you look absolutely you do not look absolutely fresh so freshen yourself up get up get up take a break from your studies and come out and have the splendor of the nature because this splendor of the nature can teach you can teach you that thousands of book together cannot teach you see this why all this toil and trouble so he says that why are you unnecessarily taking so much trouble of reading why don't you come out and allow yourself to move in the open lap of the nature where each and every elements of the nature will teach you a lot and there you won't have to stress your self you won't have to strain your eyes why because why because the nature gives us knowledge without without giving us any stress or strain so he says come out let's come out and and look at the beauty of the nature how beautiful the nature looks at that time when the sun is just just over the head of the hill mountain why because now the sun is going down and down and the mellow means the yellow pleasant light of the setting of the sun is glorifying or coloring the background of the mountain and also can be seen falling on the limitless stretch of the grass down on the earth see this the sun above, above the mountain's head a fresh a freshening luster luster means brightness mellow that is pleasant soft yellow so see here he says 
the sun above the mountains had a freshening luster mellow through all the long green fields has spread so that i have already explained you he said that he is asking his friend maybe his friend is none other than the readers he says come out first of all he says stop reading for a moment take a break freshen yourself and now look at the majesty of the nature how beautiful the nature looks with the setting of the sun and the setting of the sun is spreading its soft beautiful pleasant yellow hue almost everywhere in the background of the mountain and down there on the grass that has grown in a limitless limitless manner he says that through the long this his first sweet evening jello so he said this is the first first pleasant just a ray of the sun or ray of this his year stands for the sun here see his first sweet evening jello jello light so he said see how beautiful the light of the setting of the sun that is falling on the falling on the grass that is grown in a limitless manner on the on the limitless stretch of the land down on the earth looks beautiful come and look come and see and learn a lot from the nature that nature gives us gives us so many things and in return what does nature want nature wants nothing save save appreciation save praise so see here if wordsworth is actually glorifying nature in a such a manner in the hind just uh, in the hind just a uh, part of the brain we can think that here wordsworth is worth earth is some somewhere in the mind of the words were there is there is industrialization there was there is urbanization that was at the peak at that time these romantics were writing and these romantics were actually through their work were revolting or just rebelling or opposing those two greatest movements this uh, actually industrialization and urbanization so here in the hind side of the or in the hind brain of the poet the thing is industrialization why because industrialization somehow was drawing the people pulling the people to pulling the people to the city and and here the villages were continually 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 being vacated so here here the poet is trying to highlight the highlight the importance of the nature to in order to stop the mass mass just departure of the departure of the village people to the city by glorifying nature that how beautiful how sweet and good and and just uh, and uh, ban and the just uh, and the just advantage giving knowledge giving nature is so see this books books it is a dull and endless strife so he says give up the book stop reading the books why because if you read one book that reading of the one book actually leads you to read another and so on and so forth and this will never stop and and this is a useless kind of a what a strife a strife a struggle what you are going to get by reading book after book book after book book after book because because he means to say that nature can give that knowledge that thousand of book cannot give and and for getting that knowledge from the nature one does not need to sweat one does not need to 
to strain one size simply one needs to come out and allow the glory or the light of the nature to fall fall on oneself or upon oneself see come hear the woodland linnet linnet a name of a bird how sweet his music music on my life so he says come and listen to listen to the listen to the sounds this nature holds in it see the beautiful beautiful sound of the sweet bird that teaches us that can teach us a lot that can gives give us a lot of knowledge he says how sweet his music on my life and he says that see the impact the impact of the music on my life if i am healthy if i am absolutely absolutely calm cool i have health so this is the this is the result of the company of the nature i have got and same i want you to get see how sweet his his sorry how sweet his his yes means a song of the linnet music on my life there's more of wisdom in it he says and see the wisdom the intelligence that the song of the bird mean the that the that the sound of the nature can give you you can never get that wisdom from the book and for that you have to you don't have to strain your eyes simply you have to come and give yourself give time to the nature spend time with the with the nature and the nature will teach you things you know a fruitless manner and in return nature will not need anything from you no strain no stress no wear and tear so hope see the first three stanzas are absolutely clear now let's look at the fourth stanza and ha ha listen how just a mm, how blithe or blind the throstle sings means how happy or blind means so active he says and listen how beautifully another singing bird this throstle he says and see listen how beautiful the another singing bird is sing how beautiful another singing bird is singing that is throstle pay attention to it see he too is no mean preacher see here negative is actually used particularly for giving a positive meaning so if negative use you a negative structure of a sentence is used particularly to make particularly to make a positive meaning which figure of a speech is light t s l i t o t e s for example if i say I'm not a bad man it means I'm a good man he's not a young man it means he is an old man same as he said he too is no mean preacher mean negative meaning so here use of negative structure particularly for giving the positive meaning so he says that this bird is not less not not less not you can say this this bird is you can say that you cannot you cannot say that this bird does not have that kind of a knowledge a preacher has who is called a preacher who speaks on and on and on on the moral values on the religion on the principles on the ideas and thoughts that make one's life good or that makes one life that that make makes one life better and good is called preacher like lord buddha lord buddha was a greatest was a greatest preacher like like vivekanand preacher these were the greatest preacher of our own country or of our own you can say 
of this very particular world so he says that this bird is by no way by no way smaller in in status in in you can say that in stature in stature in comparison with a preacher if a preacher teaches us a lot just teaches us a lot gives us gives us a valuable knowledge and moral in the same manner this birth rossel can can give us he said come forth into the light of things so he says come out come out and come out and see see the things in the broad day light things become absolutely different in the broad day light means he's talking about the practicality being practical he says be being he says be practical look at the things in a practical manner and you will have a different kind of understanding you will have a different kind of thinking let nature be your teacher most important lines most important line of this poem and this line often is quoted particularly when a, particularly for particularly for particularly for telling the people or particularly for letting the people know that nature is the greatest teacher particularly this is the best line for the romantics this line shows actually the approach of the thinking of the romantic poets of the romantic age that what did nature mean for them they were they were how did how did these nature poets actually glorify the nature that here william wordsworth is asking his readers or asking his friend to allow to allow nature to be to be a teacher why because nature can give use nature can teach us great knowledge and that knowledge we cannot get by reading books so better we should give time to nature we should spend time with nature and learn the practical knowledge of the life and this life needs practical knowledge in comparison with in comparison with bookish knowledge why because practical knowledge can make this life better and bookish knowledge but he does not condemn bookish knowledge he wants a kind of a what he wants he wants his reader to what combine the bookish knowledge with the practical knowledge to make the most of it so i hope my dear learners you must have understood these four stanzas of the poem now in a brief let's look at the figures of a speech up up i told you palilosia is used by because the word is repeated two time for highlighting the main theme or main subject of the poem friend quit your books fine see or surely you'll grow double so see you grow double repetition of o sound so you can say that just assonance is you but also pay attention sound of l sound of l sound of l so sound of l is also repeated it means consonance is also used up up again repeated so again say my friend and clear your looks friend and clear your looks fine why all this toil and trouble so see toil trouble alliteration the sun a wow the mountains head a freshening luster mellow find the sun a wow the mountain head a freshening luster mellow no problem through all the long green fields has spread has spread fine see here the you can see there the sound of s s s so you can see again assonance is here his first sweet evening yellow fine sweet evening 
yellow fine see again you can say this sweet t sound t sound again repetition of t sorry assonances you can say that next books it is dull and endless strife come here come here the woodland linnet how sweet the music on my life there's more of wisdom in it and hark exclamation how blend or yes how blend the throstle sings he too is no mean a mean preacher means negative is used particularly to affirm a positive meaning that is light it is here come forth into light of the things let nature be your teacher so here let nature be your teacher here nature is compared to a teacher it means we have here also what here we have metaphor also so i hope my dear learners just uh, all the figure of speech used in this four lines are actually clear to you provided that you have some complication feel absolutely free to let me know by making a com comment down down below in the comment comment box thank you for watching